that we call thrombocytes or platelets. Platelets, thrombocytes. A thrombocyte is a platelet and a platelet is a thrombocyte. The same thing. A thrombocyte is a platelet platelet is a thrombocyte. It's the same thing. A thrombocyte is a platelet. A platelet is a thrombocyte. A thrombocyte is a... And a platelet is a... A thrombocyte is a... And a platelet is a... Not from the top. Now, the reason I do that is because when you take this test and you're looking through these questions and you see answers A, B, C, and D, and suddenly all these words look exactly the same and you start to panic, if you see thrombocyte or any word that has thrombocyte in it, you can say, well, I know that that means it's a platelet. Because platelets are thrombocytes. telling you, if you keep saying this stuff over and over, it'll stick. And that will make it a lot easier. I guarantee it's what's going to happen on the test. You're going to take this test. You're going to come to a question. It's going to have four answers. And everything's going to look exactly the same. The words are going to, or the words are going to look totally foreign. And what you could do is say, well, wait a minute. Let me break this down. And I'll figure out what this means. All right. These are important in the blood clotting process. We want our blood to clot. If I get cut. I don't want to keep bleeding everywhere. I want the bleeding to stop. I don't want to lose all my blood. This is the body's first mechanism to stop that from happening. It's not uh, I should, instead, it's a very messy process, the thrombocytes. This is not a <coughs> delicate or a delicate operation. When the levy breaks, or the dam breaks, the first thing we do to stop the water from leaking out is we get sandbags, right? We fill up sandbags, and what do we do? Do we measure out exactly where each one is going to lie and put it exactly within millimeters of where it's supposed to be? Or do we just start throwing sandbags in front of it? We throw a sandbag in front of it, right? Not terribly precise, but it works. You get enough of them there, it's going to hold back that water. Is it going to hold it there forever? No. It's going to be temporary, but it's a good temporary fix until we can bring other things in that will strengthen it and make it better. So this is what happens in our body. We have this blood vessel. coming through this blood vessel. If this blood vessel gets a tear, blood is going to pour out this way. We don't want that to happen. So our platelets are activated. Anytime they find a disruption, any sort of discontinuity or defect in this lining, in this case the defect is a tear, but any defect in this lining will activate these platelets. And that will cause the platelets to stick this lining as they're leaving the body the ones that happen to find this edge will stick to it and 
stick to each other. So these platelets are going to start sticking to this lining and sticking to each other. And before we know it, look what's happened. We've created a little bridge, a little dam to fill that space. Now it's not strong, it's not permanent. So we'll have to bring in other things that act like concrete and rebar. Fibrinogen, fibrin, that'll make this a little more solid. And then these cells will start to replicate and recreate that blood vessel lining and the blood vessel itself. But this is the first fix. Make sense? So think of these as sort of like the sandbags that just get thrown into place. They are very effective. It's not very precise, and it's only temporary. Now the lifespan of a platelet is only about seven days. It's an important concept. The lifespan of the platelet is about seven days. This is an important concept because this platelet, these platelets that are floating through our blood, they are going to stick to any defect that they find in the blood vessel lining, any defect, which means for a person who might have cholesterol or plaque building up in this vessel, the platelets are going to see this as a defect, and they're going to do what platelets do. They're going to start sticking to it, and they're going to stick to it more and more more and more and more and eventually we're going to have a blood vessel that looks something like this. So instead of having this much room for the blood to go through, we have half as much. We'll say it's 50% occluded or blocked. You ever hear of somebody having a blocked artery? This is part of what's doing it. So now, all the cells that are down here that are expecting this much blood to flow to them are getting this much blood. They're not getting this much all at once, they're getting this much. And if we're talking about blood that is supplying the heart, so that the heart can beat, those cells are going to start to see some damage, which we don't want to do, right? We definitely don't want to see any irreversible cell damage. So those, have to, those cells have to go how long in the heart to see irreversible cell damage without blood? Six hours in the heart, right? So we don't want to see any irreversible cell damage. That's something we call myocardial infarction or heart attack. We want the complete amount of blood going to those cells. That's what they're expecting. So a person who has a lot of cholesterol in their arteries with a buildup of plaques or atherosclerosis or any arterial in their arteries, we want to make sure that this doesn't happen. I'll tell you how we do that. Here's our platelet. Is this a cell? Is this a part of a cell? It's a part of a cell. It's a fragment of a cell, not a whole cell. Is this going to have DNA? No. It's going to have a nucleus. Got to have a nucleus of DNA. There's no nucleus here. It's only a part of a cell. This cell, so oh, this cell, it's not a cell. This platelet, <laughs> is in the on position. So when it finds a defect, any defect, it's going to stick to that defect and stick to the platelets around it. So what we can do is we can give this person a medication that'll cause this to go into the off position. And as soon as a switch goes into the off position, you break it. So that this can never get turned back on again. This platelet will be off for its entire life, which is approximately seven, seven days. days. This is what we call irreversible inhibition, or 
of suicide inhibition. Because once we inhibit this, once we stop this from happening, we can't turn it back on again for the entire life of this platelet. It's about seven days. The medicine we do this with is something, something called aspirin. This is why, if anybody you know has heart problems, arteriosclerosis, atherosclerosis, the doctors will put them on a low-dose aspirin, like a baby aspirin, 81 milligrams. So they take an aspirin a day, because what that does, any platelet that comes in contact with those aspirin molecules will be turned off for the entire life of that platelet, which is about seven days. Irreversible inhibition so that these cannot build up. It will not make this go away. It won't break it up. It'll just keep it from getting worse. What happens when you get a tear? Not all the platelets are going to be affected, just the ones that come in contact with aspirin. So we're still going to have some that are going to do the clotting, but it's not going to be nearly as bad. But what will we see? If you stick this person with a needle, get a blood glucose or something, you're going to see their blood is going to keep coming out and coming out and coming out and coming out. It's going to take longer. It's going to increase what we call the bleeding time. They will say that their blood is thinner. Their blood's not thinner. We haven't taken any solid particles out. The difference is if you stick my finger and then you stick their finger and you put our fingers next to each other, my blood will start to look very thick. That's because all my platelets are activated and they're clumping, and this is what blood does. It starts to clump together when there's a defect or if it slows down, it's like puddles somewhere. It'll start clumping together. And that's exactly what happens, which makes my blood look thicker, but it's not. Their blood isn't clumping. It looks thinner, but it's not. But that's why they call this, and some of those other drugs we'll talk about later on, blood thinners. They are not thinners. They do not thin the blood. They are anticoagulants. They keep from they keep the, the clotting from occurring. Lovenox shot. I'm sorry? Lovenox? Yes. It hurt. <laughs> they do not thin the blood. Now your doctors will still call them blood thinners. Your family members will still call them blood thinners. Your patients will still call them blood thinners. Because that's what they know them as. But you now know them as anticoagulants, and that's how you will refer to them. Because you will understand the mechanism. So, if I get cut, I want to clot. How about if I have a patient who I know I'm going to cut, like take to surgery? And then when I take a patient to surgery, if I'm cutting them on the table, I'm going to want their body to clot. I don't want them bleeding all over my operating theater. I'm going to want the clotting to happen. So, I'm going to tell them to stop taking their medication before the surgery. Stop taking the aspirin before the surgery. But about how long before the surgery? About seven days. Doesn't that make sense? So I'll say a week before the surgery, stop taking your aspirin. Because by the time we have the surgery, every platelet in the body will be brand new. It will not have been exposed to aspirin. So that person will now clot like they're supposed to. Will it increase this risk? Of course. But bleeding out an operating table is a lot riskier, so we'd rather that not occur. Make sense?